Hi everybody, my name is Bailey and I am with Ring Crush. And today I'm going to be showing you my workflow for taking photography. I do take all of my own pictures and I do my own setup and everything myself. So um, as you can see here, here's a quick little time lapse of how I arrange everything for photography. Um, I kind of just feel things out. I guess I, I did f learn composition in college um, and I do have a little bit of experience um, just from you know taking my own photos for um, such a long time. Um, I did speed this the video up by 4x just so it's, it doesn't drone on for 20 minutes but um, anyways I'll try to talk through what I'm doing here. Um, so I like to use tone curve to um, deepen my shadows and bring up my highlights so it's not as dull. Um, one thing that I, I stress with Photoshop and Lightroom is all I'm doing is trying to make sure that my pieces look as realistic as what they do in real life as possible. Sometimes when you snap a picture, um, the jewelry doesn't quite reflect what it looks like in real life. I'm not trying to lie to my customers. I'm not trying to make things look more saturated than they do in real life. In fact, with opals, one of the biggest struggles that I have is making them look as flashy as they do in real life. And I still haven't figured out the trick because these opals actually are a lot flashier in real life um, than they are reflected in this video or in this this image. And I still haven't fi quite figured out the trick, but they, they do sell. So I think it's I'm doing OK, but they're not perfect. But um, I'm not going to like crank up the saturation or anything on these and, and lie to the customer. But what I will do, like here, for example, this dark shadow um, is in the center of the photograph, so I'm just toning that down a little bit um, because I don't want a big black line right where the in the, in the middle of the picture. Um, and there's another line um, where the the two edges met, and I, I toned that shadow down a little bit too. Um, I'm, I'm playing around with the tone curve a little bit more just to make sure that the shadows and everything. So when you shoot raw in your DSLR, sometimes everything looks a little flat, so the tone curve can kind of help make sure everything looks looks pretty good. Um, here, the, the coral, the red looked wrong. Um, it's a little bit more orange, so I'm, I'm cranking up the luminance a little bit to make it look accurate to what it looked like in real life. Um, so that's that's what I'm playing with here, and the same thing with the, the purple or the violet um, saturation. I did bump that up because the opals, for some reason, it wasn't coming through my camera. Um, one thing you want to make sure is to color calibrate your monitor using something like a spider. Um, oh, here before I we get too far along, I'm I'm upping the sharpen, the sharpness just a little bit. This kind of just I don't know. I think it makes your your jewelry look a little bit nicer, a little crisper. Um, and I'm editing out my props. I use a little bit of clay to prop up my jewelry. Um, it's Lightroom isn't the best tool for this, so I'm going to pull it over into Photoshop in a minute. Um, I do a little pre-work in Lightroom, and then I'll pull it back over into Photoshop to clean it up in a minute. Um, but yeah, so you'll see. It's kind of like almost like bubble gum, <laughs> but it helps me um, just keep everything straight. And as mentioned before, I'm not this quick. I, I did speed this up 4x to um, make everything not as boring for you guys to watch but yeah as mentioned before you don't want to use Photoshop to lie to your customers some jewelry designers for magazines and editorial purposes you'll see they'll they might make it seem larger than life or more beautiful than it really really is and uh, I, I mean Maybe a, a really good photo editor might be able to, like, a, for example, like you'll see some Rolex um, photo editing on YouTube, and they do a pretty good job making these amazing edits that aren't really lying because Rolexes actually are beautiful, but um, they're not that beautiful in real life when you see how dramatically they change it, but... Um, I don't know. I think one of the things that amateurs, when you start, when you first start using Photoshop, you tend to get a little overly excited about all these tools, and you're like, "Wow, I can make this look brighter. I can make this look better. I can take out these scratches. I can take out this stuff." That's one of the thing. One of the things about like electroforming is I'm not going to take out any scratches. I'm not going to make it look 
okay, so I'm exporting from Lightroom here into Photoshop. Um, for some tools, Lightroom doesn't really have. So like the clone stamp, for example, um, the clone stamp I like in Photoshop a little bit better. So I didn't, I wasn't happy with how the Lightroom one was behaving. So I'm gonna do it and you'll actually see my monitor at work or on my laptop at home, you, I couldn't really see how bad this was. I ended up taking it back to work and using my monitor at, at, um, at work to fix it. You guys can probably see this doesn't look as good as it did when I came and I ended up fixing the fixing it at home. Maybe you can see, maybe you can't, but anyways, it's the final edit looks a little bit better than the one in the video, but anyways. Um, the clone stamp does work a little bit better. You have a little bit more control in Photoshop than you do in Lightroom. But Lightroom will, you know, if you're just taking out like a pimple on a person's face or something, the Lightroom one's fine. Um, so a lot of people ask, why do you use Lightroom instead of Photoshop? If you're just doing one picture, um, oh, here. So I didn't like the composition, how I photographed it. This is not a product photo. This is more like a banner or something like that, or maybe an advertisement or an Instagram shot. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just clean. There's like kind of a negative space in the bottom corner that I wasn't happy with and some other negative spaces. So I'm just kind of copying and pasting some other opals in the corner to make this composition fill out a little bit better. And I'm just playing around with the composition to make it seem a little bit more f filled out, fill out this negative space. And so it doesn't look as obvious. I am changing the color of the opal. Um, just so people can't tell that I'm, you know, stamping the opal. Um, and you'll see, you won't be able to tell. Um, so instead of it being pink, I made it kind of a, a grayish blue, so it's not as obvious. Um, and I'm going to do another one over here in the other corner. And I think I'm going to end up, I might end up cropping this out in the end. Like this might end up being a square crop, so it might not even matter. But just in case, it'll be there. Um, and so it won't be a white corner. I actually regret not having this chain here in my original composition. It was actually this shot and I wasn't going to use it. It was kind of just a, I like to click around and take too many shots. Um, and, you know, sometimes I end up picking ones that I didn't intend on um, using. But anyways, I fell in love with it. I thought it looked pretty, pretty interesting. So. Anyways, so that was that edit. Um, but so going back to the point I was using before, why do I use Lightroom instead of Photoshop? Uh, Photoshop's good for one image. Lightroom, if you're going to be taking 20 images, I'm gonna, my next video, I'll show you why. Um, you can copy and paste some edits. So let's say I want to up the exposure on every single image that I took today because I accidentally shot underexposed. Well, I can copy and paste that edit to all of those images and it just makes my workflow a little bit easier and I can go back and forth between images with ease. Anyways, so that's all for this video. Um, if you liked it, please let me know with a subscription <laughs> and uh, comment below if you have any questions. Um, like I said, if this, a lot of these edits are just intuitive for me. Um, if you ask why I do certain things, it just kind of comes intuitively. If you just play around with these things um, for a few years like I did, you know, just Start easy, start simple, and then it'll start coming to you on your own. Um, but I'm happy to answer questions and look at your pictures, and I'll let you know what to do. Um, and hopefully I can help you make your pictures prettier too. Um, thanks. Bye.